Let's talk about metabolism and cellular respiration. Do you know what this is? If you guessed an acorn or just knew it, then you're right. If you plant an acorn in the ground, what will it become? If you guessed one of these big brown and green things, called an oak tree, you are correct. But where did all the mass that this tree is made up of come from? Did it come from the ground? Do you see a big hole under the tree where it took the ground away? Did it come from the water in the ground? Some of it comes from water, but most of it actually comes from the air. The tree eats up carbon dioxide out of the air and turns it into chains of glucose that make up cellulose. This tree uses sunlight in a process called photosynthesis to use the carbons from carbon dioxide to make glucose. Our bodies do the opposite of photosynthesis and utilize glucose and oxygen to yield carbon dioxide, water, and energy in a process known as cellular respiration. Our body cells can't use glucose directly for energy. The high energy electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bonds of glucose provide the energy that is needed in order to add a phosphate onto ADP to produce ATP for our body cells. In other words, our cells can't use glucose directly for cellular processes. They use the energy from glucose and convert it into ATP. The process of taking the energy from the molecules like glucose, fatty acids and amino acids, and using it to make ATP is known as cellular respiration. Let's compare cellular respiration to what happens at the laundromat. You walk into the laundromat and there are washing machines. You only have a $10 bill. The washing machines don't take $10 bills. Just like our cells can't use glucose directly for cellular processes. First, we have to convert the $10 bill into quarters at the change machine. The change machine will spit out quarters, just like cellular respiration spits out ATP. For a $10 bill, how many quarters do you get? 40 is correct. For one glucose, cellular respiration will yield 38 ATP. The summary of cellular respiration reactions here shows that we need oxygen to make the energy that is ATP. This is why we must have oxygen to live. It is necessary in order to make sufficient ATP from glucose. Without oxygen, you would not be able to make sufficient amounts of ATP and you would die. Also, we're going to transfer the hydrogens and high energy electrons from the carbon hydrogen bonds in glucose to oxygen to make water. So guess what? Your body can make water. This is called metabolic water. So during cellular respiration, all of the carbons originally from the glucose are now carbons that make up the molecules of carbon dioxide. So imagine the carbons from the glucose in the Captain Crunch you ate for breakfast this morning are now being breathed off into the air as carbon dioxide. So goodbye Captain Crunch. Now a tree can take the Captain Crunch carbons that are now in carbon dioxide and again use them to make glucose. Such is the circle of life. What movie is this from? If you said Lion King, you are correct. B vitamins are very important for cellular respiration. NAD plus, also known as niacin, acts as a shuttle for hydrogen and high energy electrons of the carbon-hydrogen bonds of glucose. 
these hydrogens and electrons will ultimately be transferred to oxygen to make metabolic water. Think of them as little taxis. Taxis carry people, right? But NAD plus carries hydrogen and high energy electrons. Don't forget what each carries. Also, some of the energy from the glucose, from the high energy electrons, from the hydrogen carbon bonds is converted into heat contributing to our body heat. So it's not a completely efficient process, but it does keep us warm, which is good. So we said that three things would happen by the end of cellular respiration. They were make 38 ATP from one glucose. Hydrogens and electrons from glucose will be added onto oxygen to make metabolic water. And all of the carbons of the glucose will be converted into carbon dioxide. But cellular respiration doesn't happen in one big step. Cellular respiration can be broken down into four main parts called glycolysis, acetyl-CoA formation, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. The reactions of cellular respiration are known as oxidation reduction reactions. Please know that oxidation means losing hydrogens and electrons, while reduction means gaining hydrogens and electrons. It looks like glucose is losing hydrogens and electrons as it eventually becomes carbon dioxide. So we would say glucose is oxidized. And the opposite is happening to the oxygen. As it becomes water, it is gaining hydrogens and electrons, so oxygen is reduced. You may use the acronym OIL RIG to remember that oxidation is losing and reduction is gaining hydrogens and electrons. The first step of cellular respiration is glycolysis. You have to know where in the cell this process occurs. It happens in the cytosol. It is also a process that does not use oxygen. Processes that do not use oxygen are called anaerobic. Glycolysis takes the 6-carbon glucose molecule and splits it into two 3-carbon molecules called pyruvate. Please continue the next video as we talk about the details of the four main steps of glycolysis. Thanks for watching.